Good morning. I would like to welcome everybody here today at the First Presbyterian Church of Sibley, Iowa, especially those who are visiting or those listening in. There's a few announcements that I would like to highlight in our bulletin. Uh, choir practice will meet up front here after church. Um, we'll be singing on November 24th, and it'll be a, a song we all know. So if you want to sing um, and you're able to sing, please come and practice uh, after church today. Next Saturday, this Saturday, Fishes and Lows will have our meal. We are serving a Thanksgiving uh, meal, so we, we do need a few more items that you can find on this sign-up sheet. Most of it's uh, the big stuff taken care of, but we still need some sides, and so please look at those and see if you can um, be willing to help or to donate anything. November 20th, we're having our family night out event again. We're going to be serving think a Thanksgiving meal, and they're asking that if anybody has frozen or canned vegetables from their garden and would be willing to donate it, you can contact Emily Zelstra and let her know by Sunday, November 17th. They're going to um, hopefully have some um, EMT training after, after the meal, so if you want to go and get trained for that type of thing or listen to what you can do, you can um, do that after the meal. The nominating committee needs to meet again in the fellowship hall after church. Just a quick meeting to go over um, some more lists. And if you uh, are in the committee, please meet into the sanctuary. After the sanctuary, go in the fellowship hall. Monday night at 5 o'clock, the um, 125th anniversary committee will have a meeting at 5 o'clock. It's different than the 7 o'clock time that we normally meet. So just a reminder, there is a meeting Monday night in the um, meeting room. There's a, a few prayer changes just to highlight that are different from last week. Um, we do want to continue to pray for, um, for Bob's brother, Dick, who had passed away um, last week, and just uh, pray for this family to be with them. Rolly Monk Monkmeyer has returned to Countryview Manor following his stay at the Vera McKinnon. Then, and Lucille Franson, who was also in the hospital last week, she has also returned to just uh, give praise that they can go back and um, give them strength during this time. We have an update from Novina. Um, she's been having a lot of fluid in her uh, chest cavity, and they've been draining that, and that seemed to be helping her, her weakness and shortness of breath. But we want to pray they can figure out um, what's causing the fluid so that can um, help her be at rest, help her be at rest. Is there any other uh, joys or concerns that people would want to announce? If not, let us continue our worship by um, welcoming each other in the name of Jesus Christ. Good morning. 
Please join me in the call to worship. I will exalt you, my God the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. Please bow your heads in an attitude of prayer. Heavenly Father, when we gather in your name, we are changed. There is no way around it. We cannot come together in your presence and not be moved. So today, we surrender to your moving and to the ways you desire to change us. Let this hour together be sacred, and may your name be made great. You are holy, worthy, and full of glory. We are humbled in your presence. Receive our worship as an offering of praise. In Jesus Christ's holy name, amen. We will now sing hymn number 115, sometimes Alleluia, or the words will be on the screen.
Please join me in the unison prayer of confession, which will be on the screen or in your bulletin. Heavenly Father, we are so easily confused by what the world tells us that we forget the stories of faith we heard as children. We are so fearful of tomorrow. We are not aware of your spirit with us today. We are so busy wondering what if or suppose. We cannot hear the promises you whisper to us. So once again, gracious God, have mercy on us. You know our hearts so well. Touch them with your grace. You see our deepest fears. Heal them with your peace. You hear our secret longings. Speak to them of your hope. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Even though we fail again and again, God loves us still. Friends, believe in the good news of the gospel, for it is in Jesus Christ that we are truly forgiven. Amen. Special music, the Rainbow Bell Choir will be performing.
Read it one more. At this time, we're going to have a children's message, so I invite any kids to stay or more to come down if you would like to listen to the message. Good morning. Are you guys kind of tired today? Yeah. Always tired? <laughs> Were you outside playing yesterday in the nice weather? Is that why you're tired today? Uh, and you had to get up early. Oh, we can get tired sometimes. Well, I have a bunch of stuff in here that I want you guys to um, see if you can figure out what these things have in common. Okay? I got this blanket here. <laughs> Let's see. I'll lay it down there. All right. Let's see what else do I got in here. Well, I got a T-shirt. Oh, I got another T-shirt here. Uh, a hat. A scarf. Some um, tags that you put on your luggage. Okay. Well, what do some of these things have in common? You can get them from a store. That's true. Any anything else? Yeah, you can sleep with a lot of these. They're kind of some of them are cozy. Um, keep you warm. How about these though? The looks. That's get, you're getting close to what I'm thinking. Yep, you can put these on your backpack. Style. Uh, so, do you guys like any of these things? That um, do you guys like? You like those two? In the hat. Your under scarf. So. Oh yes, yeah, griddle right here. <laughs> so a lot of these things are things that you can like. And when you guys like a sports team, do you guys ever get t-shirts or hats? Or if you like something like a book, you got a scarf for it, or movies or, or games you like to play, you might get some of these and you wear it around because you're a fan of that team or um, maybe that game or movie or book that you like to read. So you like to buy this stuff and have it on you or to show, hey, this is what I really like. Um, Sometimes we can get kind of crazy. Have you seen people at football games put paint on their face and hold up signs? It can get pretty crazy, can it? Are you guys like some of those? You guys like to dress up and put paint on your face and a little bit? Is it fun? Well, most of the time it's pretty fun to support something and really be a big fan and just, you just got to wash it off. That's right. And Or like on homecoming, you see a lot of people dressed up and orange and black, and you're supporting something you really like, and um, you're giving encouragement to that. Well, I have a question. Um, can we be fans of Jesus? Yeah, we could be fans, but do we, go, we get as crazy um, for Jesus sometimes as we are for things we like, like books and movies, uh, sports teams? Do we get dressed up for Jesus and like, yeah, go Jesus? You can at church, you do sometimes if you're singing or playing bells, but do you do that every day? You know, do you sometimes probably don't ask for things that represent maybe a memory for Jesus? Like maybe you have a Bible, but maybe that's it. Um, I brought something else in my bag here. Um, it, most of you guys should know what this is a cross. And, Sometimes we can get things like this, or my necklace, and you can wear it or see it in your house. Um, and you can look at it, and it's like being a fan, but for, for Jesus, you want to be more than just a fan. Because a fan is something that can change. Maybe you like one team, and maybe eventually you, don't, you stop liking that sport, or you, you get something else. Like maybe you really like a book, and then you get another book you like instead. 
But for Jesus, it's just not a passing phrase. You want to be committed to him all the time and not just a fan. You want to be, that's going to be your first thing. And that's what our message is going to be about today, about putting God first and everything else in our life after that, if we put God first, um, can get better. So I have some candy. You guys can pick um, two of those if you want, and you have to share it just as our rule. And I'm going to close with prayer, and then you can pick out some candy. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today, and um, we just thank you for all the kids who are up here today that they came in to church and played bells and also just to um, listen and, word, and learn about you through Sunday school or through the worship service today. And we pray that you can be with them on the rest of this week as they go through school. We pray this in your son's holy name. Amen. All right, a couple different things. There's uh, suckers or some um, fruit snack type gummy things. If you get two, then you can share one with somebody else. You want, you want, you want another one? I'm waiting. You want one? You got it. You want some of these gummies? Okay. Okay. Always a tough choice. <laughs> um, good morning. I'm here. Um, I was asked to give just a minute for mission for the script program. Um, as a lot of you know, it's a fundraiser for camper ships. Um, for students that attend camp, mainly in summer, but for other ones throughout the year. Um, and this past year, we were able to give out almost $1,600 towards camp fees um, for 26 students. <clears throat> I don't know if anyone does have questions on how this works. Um, I know I've tried to explain a few times before, but if there's specific things that you are still kind of unsure of how it works, um, please feel free to ask myself or Don. Um, just kind of the basic premise of it again is it's probably it's probably one of the easiest fundraisers in terms of you buying things because it's for things that you would normally use anyway and it's also you get the full amount for the gift cards that you purchase <clears throat> excuse me so for example if you brought you know a grocery card or a pizza ranch um, gas cards things like that for everyday use we buy them at a discounted rate so then when you purchase them, if it's a $100 card or a $25 card, you get that full value of the card. You use the full value of the card. And the, the difference is made up by the vendors that we purchase the cards from. So it's, like I said, a really nice, easy way to um, be able to raise those funds for camperships. We will be sending in an order this Tuesday. So if anyone was interested in purchasing, again, either for yourself or with the holidays coming up, I know a lot of people give gift cards for gifts, um, and we can order from hundreds and hundreds of different places. So you, um, most people can find, obviously, something that they would use. Um, if there's enough interest, we would do one closer to Christmas. I know it seems really, really early to be ordering for Christmas, and the reason for that is with the Caring Christmas that we do through church, they do order cards to us, so we just wanted them early enough. They can use them um, for Black Friday shopping or if they have early holidays. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I also, while I was up here, just a quick reminder, um, we will have bell practice on Wednesday. We are playing next week. And we also always welcome new members. So if anyone was interested in playing, if you can read music and do this, that's basically the skills needed. So we would certainly welcome anyone to come and join us. Um, we practice this week at 745. And then again, we'll play on Sunday. Thanks. Our Old Testament reading is from Psalm 145, verses 1 to 5 and 17 to 21. This is a psalm of praise by David. I will exalt you, my God, the King. 
I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your work to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. And then skipping down to verse 17, the Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. And now will you please stand as we sing our hymn of preparation, which is number 284 in the hymnal, or the words will be on the screen. May be seated. The epistle reading for today comes from 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 5, and then continuing on 13 through 17. Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him, we ask you, brothers and sisters, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by the teaching allegedly from us, whether that is by prophecy or by word of mouth or by letter, asserting that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed for destruction. He will oppose and exalt himself over everything that is called God, or, or is worshipped, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things? And continuing on to, seven, to 13 through 17. 
But we ought to always thank God for you, brothers and sisters, loved by the Lord, because God chose you as first fruits to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and through belief in the truth. He called you through our gospel that you might share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the teachings we pass to you, whether by word of mouth or by letter. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and the God the Father, our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. Here is the reading of our Lord. Let us pray. O Holy Spirit, we pray that you can cover us with your presence today that we may be moved by your words and your spirit. We pray this in your son's holy name. Amen. A guide was hired by some hunters to take them into the backwoods of Maine. Some days after, they became hopelessly lost, and quite naturally, they began to doubt the competence of their guide. You said you were the best guide in Maine, they reminded him. I am, he said, but I think we're in Canada now. <laughs> you are no longer a guide when you are yourself are lost. But the question is, are we no longer a Christian when we cannot recall what that makes us Christian in the first place. For those of us who would be followers of Christ, the most basic question we need to ask ourselves is, what is a Christian? We're living in a world where there is now virtually a Christian anything. Look around us. There are Christian counseling centers, Christian athletes, Christian coalitions, Christian bookstores, Christian schools, Christian plumbers, doctors, bakers, bankers, lawyers, you get the idea. With all these Christians out there, what makes a Christian? A young KKK mother had appeared in her hood and cape on the Donahoe show and shouted on the top of her lungs that she was going to raise her children to be good Christian kids. In an old 2020 segment on used car salespeople, one man protested, well, I'm a Christian salesman, while on camera captured him doing the very thing he said he would never do to his customers. In 1995, the head of the Christian militia called the Oklahoma City bombing of an office building in a daycare center as fine of a piece of art as any Rembrandt painting. What does it mean to be a Christian? In our culture today, the word Christian, in too many people's minds, stands for everything that Jesus didn't stand for. They see it as hypocritical. We add the label as a side thought or when it's convenient. Other people make it their cause, even if their cause is un unbiblical or it harms other people. That is why Baptist minister and writer Gordon MacDonald had said he has had it with the word Christian, which he says hardly means anything any longer. When the term Christian is used as a descriptor or adjective of a noun, for those of you who like grammar, it becomes second to what you place behind it. It is something we use to explain what we think we are first. For example, if we say we are a Christian baker, we are saying that our main focus is that we're a baker. That happens to be a Christian. Or maybe we're just using that to market to other people who are Christian. Instead of saying, I am a Christian who bakes. And that is my job. Of course, when many of us say Christian, fill in the blank, we aren't implying that we place it second in our lives. 
Sometimes it is used as a dis to describe the difference between two things, say like a public school or a Christian school. But the problem lies in how the term is used, or as Gordon MacDonald had said, does it hold any meaning to us? What does it mean to be Christian? He says he never uses the word anymore, but has developed his own word to replace it, Christ follower. Paul tells and warns the Thessalonians in the text for today in 2.4. He says, he will oppose and exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. The enemy, he wants nothing more than to separate as many people as he can from our Father. He knows he has already lost, but he wants to take down as many people as he can. He wants to make things that are good. He wants to take all the good things and turn them against us. Say, uh, being a Christian athlete, he wants you to keep more and more focus on being not a Christian, but an athlete. Then when we age out of a sport, we get hurt or other means stop us from being that athlete, we feel like we've lost that identity. In a recent movie that I'm sure I've heard many of you went to, the coach John Harrison was asked the question by a man in the hospital named Thomas Hill. He said, who are you? When he lists all these things, which were good things in his life, being a coach, a teacher, a father, a husband. He lists many good things. But Thomas asked him about the thing he, he said last, being a Christian, a Christ follower. What happens if everything that is good in our life is taken away? Who are you? From a biblical standpoint, I can say that I am not a Christian woman. I'm not a Christian parent. I'm not a Christian wife, I'm not a Christian pastor, a Christian patriot, a Christian anything. I am a Christian, period, a Christ follower, period, a child of God, period. That is who I am first. In our text, Paul warns us about the enemy and the schemes he will try. He encourages them by reminding them that we are God's first fruits, that he called us through the gospel to go and teach others the good news. He said not to be deceived by false prophets or the enemy's schemes, because if Christ becomes any other place in our life besides first, are we still a Christian? Matthew 6, 24 warns us about this. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. When we believe in Christ and accept that gift and relationship that God called us into, we have purpose. When God is placed first in our life, over all other things that we once were placing before him, those things can get stronger. Whether that was being a parent, a spouse, a friend, a daughter, at work or at school, they get stronger because we have the love of Christ first. We're able to love more and to strengthen those things that we once were placing before him. But the question is, how can we do this? Sometimes it is easier said than done. How do we let people know that we are Christians first? How do we become true Christ followers? How do we show what others what it means to be a Christian? First and foremost, we need to have a relationship with Christ 
and truly believe in him. Without this true belief in him, we cannot call ourselves Christians or Christ followers. For it is Christ who makes us into Christians. Because without him, there would be no Christians. There would be no church. To deepen that relationship, we need to spend time with our Lord. Whether that is through prayer, praise, reading, listening, coming together in worship like today with other Christians to help get our mind focused as we worship and praise God with, one each, with each other. We want to be like David, the psalm, in, in the verse 21. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. We continually want to be praising our Lord for the small things, for the grand things. For everything is, is God's. It all belongs to him. And without Christ in our lives, there is no Christians. Second, we need to follow what Christ taught us. As Paul says in the text for today in verse 215, So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the teachings we passed on to you, whether by word of mouth or by letter. We can talk the talk all we want, but can we walk our talk? We can learn all things about Christ and even tell people about him, but we need to follow through with what we say. Are we the same person today in church as we are any other day of the week? Christ didn't just teach us all these things to say, and as long as you act like this during Sunday, you'll be okay. No. We are called to follow his teachings 24-7 through the ups and downs of our life, even when it hurts, even when we're on top of the mountain. There are no breaks in this relationship. Following Christ isn't easy, and we shouldn't become static in our journey with him. And lastly, we need to combine it all to show others we are Christians by our love. Just like the song, we want to show others through our love. When we build our love to God and that relationship first, all other people will see his love through us. They will see that the love we have for, for God strengthens our other relationships, makes us better people. When we love our God and go and share that with others, they see that light shining in you. Sometimes we use words to teach about Jesus in Sunday school, during church, or even just day-to-day -day conversations. But like Christ, sometimes we need to go out and act out our actions. To go and to help people in need, whether that's opening a door for somebody, helping to feed the homeless, to clothe them. There's many things that we are called to do. We can share the love of Christ with others in many ways. But we can't be to guide to others when we are, ourselves are lost. But God will, we can rely on God and other believers to help get us back on that path. For in those moments when we fail, which will come someday, sometime, for those moments when we do fail, God will pick us back up. He will turn those failings into something good. He can turn that hurt and ease that pain so that someday we can be a guide to others. When we see our friend falling down the same path we were, when somebody else is suffering the same fate we just suffered, we can be there for them, shining God's love on them. So who is a Christian? Those of us who believe in Christ Jesus and place him first, follow his teachings before anything else in our lives. And how will we show others we are Christians? Through our love. Our love of Christ that shines out from us. Amen.
Let us pray. God of compassion, love, and great grace and mercy, we bring our worries to you. We pray this, O oh Lord, that we can be here for this world and to be a beacon shining out in the darkness, in the broken and sinful world. We pray that you can be with those suffering in places of violence and persecution, to strengthen those who are being oppressed and who suffer greatly. We also pray that you can strengthen us to be called Christ followers, to put you first in our lives and not second or any other place. We ask for patience for when we are helping others and for strength when we need help ourselves. We thank you for the gift of your son and his sacrifice on the cross for our sins, that with his sacrifice and true belief in him, we are given that grace that only you can give and the power to go out and to share God's love with others through your actions and our words and prayers. Now let us pray for those in need of your healing hand. We pray for Rolly Monkemeyer, who has returned home or back to the Country View Manor. We pray for Nevina Popkies that you can help ease the, her pain and help the doctors find where the fluid is coming in to her lungs. We pray for Lois Lortz and her family as she's been on hospice care and just to be with them during this time to give them comfort and peace. We, we want to pray for Leanne Renner's mom, Arda, who, who's been, had a recent stay in the hospital. We want to pray for Lucille Franson, who's returned from the hospital and is back at Countryview Manor. We want to pray for Pastor Terry's mother, Muriel, that you can be with her in her transition to Sibley Specialty Care to just help her feel welcomed and to help her get her strength back. We want to continue to other praise for pray for Art Cruz, who is in the nursing home, to help his weakness, to give him his strength back. We want to pray for Clint, who has received his sentencing, and just to pray with him when they can find where he's going to be placed. We want to be praise that Jim Travail's uh, surgeries have, been, have gone well, that you can be with him in his recovery, that he can have a quick um, and, and quick healing. We want to pray for all those who are fighting cancer, for Violet Byers and Ruth Jurens and Mackenzie Ryder and Eli. We just want to pray for all those else who are fighting cancer, whether we know them in our hearts or... Um, or those who are um, suffering it right now. We also just want to be with those who have lost loved ones. We want to pray for Bob and Joyce Rohde's brother and his family, um, for Dick, that he's passed away and you can be with them and give them strength, Lord. We give you also praise of joys and thanksgivings for having beautiful weather yesterday and just to um, pray that we can always praise you, whether it's nice or if it's cold out. Now we, we pray to strive to be your true disciples of Jesus Christ, praying the prayer he taught us to say, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We want to continue our worship today by giving ourselves and our gifts. Then the people rejoiced, because they had offered so willingly, for they made their offering to the Lord with a whole heart.
Let us pray. O God, who has so greatly loved us and mercifully redeemed us, give us grace that in everything we may yield ourselves, our wills, and our works to you, O Lord. We pray that we can offer ourselves as an offering to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's continue standing for our closing hymn, Come Christians Join to Sing. The words will be on the screen or on, in your hymnals on 108. Friends, as we go from this place, remember who you are. We are Christ followers, a child of God. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen.